Hello one and all, this is Jasneet Singh, AKA Innovative Coder from Innovative Coder Workstation. And today we have uh, Technical Sapien in our second uh, innovative podcast. Uh, Technical Sapien is ethical hacker, cybersecurity expert, Android developer, and marketing influencer. He has a community of 26.5K devs on Insta and uh, more you get to know about him via this podcast. Hello everyone. Like a brief introduction of your journey of uh, like who is actually Technical Sapien? Okay, uh, basically Technical Sapien is a community of those people who are interested in technology and who want to explore technology, want to learn new technology daily. So we we teach hacking, we teach coding, cracking, even we you know we teach people programming. And now we are coming up to machine learning. So every aspect of technology we are covering day by day. Fine. Uh, so you cover like all these things: Android development, machine learning, cybersecurity, and like all of this stuff. Yeah, we have we have interest in many technologies, many upcoming technologies. So we cover everything. So, uh, what, who is like? What's your journey in ethical hacking? Okay, uh, so it was started just uh, two years from now, just two years from now, it was summer vacation from two years from now, and uh, I started learning ethical hacking from YouTube, from Google, from many resources, even I have used uh, dark web, there are a ton of videos, ton of uh, ultimate resources available on uh, darknet, and they helped me a lot, I have read books on it, so it was all fun, and I, I I just increased my interest in that field. That ethical hacking, ethical hacking was uh, very interesting for me. It it it, it was like uh, I always used to I always used to find solutions to break uh, a log or a, you know encryption keys. And now uh, I'm learning cryptography from uh, DRDO. So it's been amazing from learning ethical hacking myself to learning cryptography from. Uh, esteemed organization uh, so technical uh, like many juniors approach to me uh, regarding this thing like we need to enter into uh, cyber security right okay. so what are the best resources according to you so you have uh, you know like from where you have learned and you have seen what are the best resources for someone who is beginning and like from beginner to expert level so what are the best yeah. resources to learn cyber security and ethical hacking uh, there are many, there are many resources. The internet is full of resources about these. Uh, one of them is Udemy. Uh, Udemy has a lot of courses about ethical hacking. But apart from this, uh, there are many websites like Hack This Site, or there are many capture the flag competitions you can apply for. And there are many, uh, many free books available on Google, even Google Play Store. So learn from there. There are a lot of resources available. And even I'm also organizing uh, hacking classes at a very cheap price, so they can also enter into it. And apart from this, if uh, they are trying to make a career in ethical hacking, there are many platforms like uh, they can go for the CES examination, GIS examination, and OSC examination. There are many platforms. Even we have Red Hat for this, a uh, very big platform for ethical hacker contestors. So there is a lot of stuff. Okay, fine. So uh, one thing which uh, you know, one one point I was want to raise is uh, like, what is the value of these all of these certifications? So do they add any value to your resume or like the main knowledge is something which you need to gain? The value of a certification is null for me. Knowledge is everything. Uh, the power of knowledge is really great. Uh, even if you don't, uh, uh, if you don't have a graduation degree, if you don't have any certification, but if you have skills, you can hack into any system, and they can, they will hire you. They will hire you for their for their security analyst. So, uh, graduation degree or any kind of certification doesn't matter. That your skills matter the most. So, could you please comment on what are the current uh, job scenarios in India? Because, see, uh, when uh, juniors approach me regarding like what should like we, sh- we are going to enter cyber security, what should we do? Where should we go? So, one thing which in my mind comes is like uh, there aren't many opportunities in this field, in particular this field in India. If I talk yeah. particularly about India, so what do you think? Uh, actually, in India, 
there are uh, not so many vacancies for ethical hacking there are but uh, like for in, in for example in a company there are only 10 to 15 security analyst uh, vacancies and there are a lot of ethical hackers uh, when i scroll up my linkedin then i found many red hat certifications many people who have done red hat many people who have done cs so i think that there are so many people uh, in this queue for the vacancies of ethical hacking so for india there are there aren't so many vacancies but uh, if you if you go abroad there are many opportunities even they have uh, even they have an organization for particularly doing this work only they uh, like company company come to that company they told them to penetrate into their systems and then they give them few bucks for that so there are particular organizations which aren't available in, the, in India. So if those organizations also come in India, so there will be a lot of vacancies for ethical hacking also. So the next, so the next point uh, I want to raise is, do you think anyone is anyone's privacy is safe in this digital world? Like you know, uh, even in the, the this web series known as TVF pictures, they had this uh, they had this quote. Like, um, you know, privacy is a myth. Privacy or me is a myth, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I also have the same tagline, like, uh, security is a myth. So, no one's security is, uh, no, you can you can get it that he is secure or she is secure or she is secure. Really, security is a myth. Even if you are connecting on a public Wi-Fi network, you are, you are, you are feeling that it's a, uh, it's a router or it's an administration who is controlling us but no if i if i enter into that uh, public system then i can easily do man in the middle man in the middle attack so i can capture your information i can capture your packet and people think that we are secure like we have uh, most of the encryption available with us but no it's not true nothing is that much secure that you're thinking you know appearances are always deceptive and security is always deceptive yeah, that was my main concern, you know, like, uh, even I bought that uh, camera hider, yeah. you know, that. Uh, I, I also, I also many, many, many people use that. Yeah. Okay, so now we now I would be asking some, some personal, personal questions regarding your, uh, you know, internship and training in uh, DRDO. So first question, uh, how you get into, like, how you get this training in <laughs> DRDO? Yeah, actually, uh, there are many there are many ways to get into DRDO or like uh, Atomic Bona Center or ISRO. There are many ways. First of all, uh, if you have uh, any reference from any scientist or from a, a, you know reputed people, then you can get in. Or if you are from IIT or NIT, then, then you have a result seat for, uh, at there. But uh, I tried a very different method. I think I think nobody has tried that before. So what I did. Uh, I increased up my LinkedIn. I increased up them to nearly 1500 and I have messaged each and every scientist, nearly more than 100 scientists of DRDO and ISRO. Uh, I sent them my resume and a request to get me there. And it's almost two months and I lost hope that I will get any reply from them. And after two months, I got an email from a scientist that uh, uh, you need to submit a, your NOC and you will, your training will be confirmed. And I was like, holy shit, what is that? And I got selected in that. Uh, my resume was very good. Uh, they prefer me, they prefer me to the senior scientist for the training. And now I um, learned BHDL uh, using FPGA and performing cryptography on that. Now I know it's complex. <laughs> cool. cool. Yeah. So congratulations, congratulations on your uh, selection Thank in the you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so how is your initial experience in DRDO? Uh, actually, uh, when I entered there, uh, first of all, there are a, there is a lot of protection. No, nobody can get in there so easily. I I have to go level by level. I have I have verified myself. I have verified my institution. I have verified my home. Everything. Then I get in and I get a single day pass uh, for the day. Then I used to make uh, passes for daily, daily basis till I get uh, my ID for, from there. So uh, there is a lot of protection, military, military is everywhere. 
there is a military in there and at, at the starting i was thinking that uh, it's a governmental organization so no one no one will be you know no one will be working so fine or but no it's it, they are working day and hour and minute every scientist is working very hard uh, i have a scientist uh, i can't tell i can't tell, tell her name and he is working on a new technology actually many projects are going in there and you even don't know about them there are a lot of lot of stuff going there okay. it's confidential i can tell yeah totally fine <laughs> so you have like a very good experience yeah i'm learning every day good okay so could you please comment on the condition of cyber security in india uh cyber security in india uh like we have many cyber security experts we have many great ethical hackers uh but i think they need to, they need to be given a, a good chance to grow up like we have many hackers who are engaged in uh, black hat uh, black hat hacking uh if if they are supported by government or if they are funded by any uh, you know private organization they can be turned into white hat white uh, you know they can be turned into ethical hacker and they can work for india but but the scope is already very less and the people are distracted from ethical hacking to black hat hacking so currently uh, uh, cyber security in india is not that much active even we have some great ethical hackers like ankit faria and ankush yeah. but still we lag behind fine so uh, what do you think is the role of these uh, private organizations in compare and contrast the situation between these uh, private organizations who are working in cyber security and uh, a government organization like drdo uh like private organizations i like uh, what i have experienced Uh, then my my perspective totally changed about government organization like DRDO. So I I, th- I thought that uh, that DRDO is a government organization, so there will not be that much activeness. And private is much better than that. But when I entered into them, then I I saw their platforms. I saw that there are so many projects going there. Uh, people don't know there are so many different kind of machines I haven't seen before. And uh, there are a lot of systems, you know. uh they have a cpu that's not a cpu I, i don't i don't know what it was that there is a cpu in that and there was a server in that means every system has its own server is that not secure and i was completely amazed to see that uh i go to i go to their uh netcafe house that was the secure the most secure place in the uh, there then i go there and nobody was allowed to nobody was allowed to enter into it i have uh, seen many laboratories there is a laboratory named iron implementation means you know iron implementation there is going a research on iron implementation and the wiring are covering them military is there nobody can enter into them so government i think government is focusing on security government is focusing on our defense part and as compared to private organizations private organization has not that much funds to do that much research as government is doing although although government is hiring best ethical hackers government is hiring best scientists for their work so in this case i think government organization are doing much better than the private organization uh, nice to hear that that uh, government organizations are like doing better in this this yeah. particular area because we need cyber security in like coming yeah. days so i think you know as the blockchain concept would rise then also we need something which is uh, you know and as soon as you know the, the, we have this digital india going on so we also need to yeah, actually, uh, be uh, more there is an there is uh, there is an incident uh, there is a scientist and he told me about the trading that okay. is also that he is also focused on trading and he told me that he is learning advanced formula language and i don't know what it, what was that he said that i i have learned advanced formula language and now i use that api connection to the uh, some trading account and now i'm i'm doing automatic trading means he is earning 50k per week this really great awesome yeah <laughs> so there is a lot of, there is a lot of research going there they are creating new things so that's amazing that's really cool awesome 
first. Okay, so enough of these technical questions. So <laughs> we yeah. we also know a soft side of uh, technical sapien. So you are also a poet, and now you have a dedicated Instagram page. I think known as Mortical Mortal Feelings. Mortal if I'm not wrong. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what's all that? Uh, actually, it's not about. It's not that dedicated page. I just write and post there. I don't. I, I don't. I really don't care about the number of followers or the number of likes I'm getting there. But I just write my heart there. So it's all about. It's it's uh, it's a start from the ninth class. When I was in ninth class, I used to uh, write poems and you know shyries. So it was. It's a great feeling to learn, to learn new things to. Uh, to explore the new side of me. Actually, it's not side. It's 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 the soft side of me. Yeah. Awesome. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, okay. So, what has what is one thing which Instagram has taught you? Instagram, I think Instagram haven't taught me anything. It just gives me a family who is teaching me every day. It gives me a great community of technologists. Uh, I I talk to I talk to nearly 50 people every day of my community. There is so much engagement in my people, so I talk to them. I just feel like a, a family. Even some of some of them people are switched from Instagram to WhatsApp chat. So it's like that. And Instagram is also doing good. Uh, they are creating. We can create community. We can you know connect each other easily and one of the best things is that it's free of source and now Instagram is focusing on the content um, creators so it's also good although its algorithm is, is very bad yeah everybody knows so uh, this question I asked in my previous uh, podcast session as well what is the one thing uh, you like most about the Instagram what is the one good point I think the picture quality is, and there is not so much mass on Instagram as compared to Facebook. That is yes. one cool thing about Instagram. I also believe in this. Okay. And the second question is, what is the one worst thing? Like, one thing you don't like on Instagram? Uh, one thing, I think the number of requests I'm getting every day. <laughs> <laughs> They can, they can, yeah, but I know I have to answer them, so I answer them every week. And but I used to answer direct messages daily. Still, still, few people do many stories a day. Yeah. I also irritate. It's also irritating. Okay. Yeah. So, the last question, the final question: What are your future prospects? So, what technical sapien thinks and has a you know, everyone, everybody has a plan for insta for like growing their community and uh, also regarding your uh, career. So, what is okay. what are your future plans? Okay, so uh, actually, technical seven was not a uh, motive that I that I will create a community or I will create an organization in future. It just reflects my interest. Like I was in ethical hacking, so I started a page. And then I learned Android, Android development, then basic software development, then I, I became a marketing influencer. So it's just reflecting my interest. So what will I learn in future? I will show them in technical session. That's it. No future plans, not that much uh, planning that I will make it an organization of that much. Okay. That's it. Yeah. And uh, what do you plan for yourself? For my so, yeah. uh, still, I'm learning. Uh, I'm learning actually. I'm learning a cryptography. I have told, and I'm also interested in machine learning. So I have to learn machine learning. The I have to create. Uh, I have to create something new for the society, uh, so that we can we can grow further more. You know, I like Elon Musk very well. I, I know Elon. Oh, I like Elon Musk very. So I just want to be like him. And I also want to contribute in the society by these developments. Cool. Fine. Okay. So you said uh, you want to mix like cybersecurity and machine learning, right? Yeah, kind of. 
so uh, you know in my initial semesters like i think in first semester i was very much uh, uh, fond of this cyber security field but eventually i started with machine learning first and uh, you know cyber security didn't work right. out for me that well so i was <laughs> finding like uh, you know a combination of both of them so then i found out something which is uh, uh, open mind open mind it is a uh, i think it is a open source uh, organ it's an open source Documentary made by Andrew Trask. Uh, so I think you must check out because it's a you know combination of uh, all of these things: so blockchain, uh, machine learning, as well as uh, this cyber security. So, yeah. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So this was uh, Technical Sapien with us, and uh, this was our second innovative podcast with him. Uh, we'll be back again in the third innovative podcast with a new guest for this week. We had technical safety. That's all. Bye. Bye.